Hi everybody, my name is Nikki Ferrugi, and over the past four months, I've dedicated my time to research the topics of pancreatic cancer and mRNA vaccines, and today I will be presenting my research to you all. The title of my presentation is mRNA vaccines and pancreatic adenocarcinoma antigens, which antigen is the one? Here's some background information on pancreatic cancer. Um, pancreatic adenocarcinoma, commonly known as pancreatic cancer, is a malignancy in the digestive system that has had no progress in finding a cure in the past two decades. Treatments for this cancer include surgery followed by chemotherapy, and not all patients are actually candidates for surgery due to the late diagnosis and metastasis of the cancer. And I'm going to provide some background information on mRNA vaccines as well. Um, mRNA vaccines have become a very popular topic due to its usage in the recent COVID-19 vaccines. And mRNA vaccines are the immune system that's programmed to attack the cancer cells by injecting the person with mRNA vaccines that codes for a protein specifically found in whatever cell is being targeted. So for in the COVID-19 vaccine, the spike protein was being targeted. For my project, we will be looking for a specific antigen that will target the cancer cells. And antigens are the target proteins for the immune system. Here's some more background knowledge. In 2021, Xing Huang and his colleagues conducted a research process to find antigens in PAAD, which can be used to create mRNA vaccines that could help improve prognosis and overall survival of pancreatic cancer patients. They concluded that the antigens ADAM9, EFNB2, MET, TMOD3, TPX2, and WNT7A were the top choices to be used for an mRNA vaccine. And here are some graphs just to provide further information. Let me get my pen right here. Um, as you can see, the higher expression of genes correlate with poor prognosis. You can see what it declines for each graph. mRNA overexpression and pancreatic tumors were used to compare the control tissues in these graphs as well. My scientific question for today is how could one determine which of these six potential antigens discovered by Huang and others could be the most potent use for a pancreatic cancer mRNA vaccine? The way I would find this is to see which, one, uh, which antigen is localized on the surface of cells and shows the lowest expression in normal adult tissues. So the methods I'll be using the more specific terms will be subcellular localization and gene expression analysis. Okay, so if you look up here, you can see these bright, beautiful images I got of these antigens. And they are, are colorful, as I said. Um, the red in each one represents um, the cytoskeleton, the blue represents the nucleus, and the green are the where are the, the proteins are located in the cell. For the sake of right now, we're gonna be pro focusing on the green. Um, the goal is to find an antigen that is located in the plasma membrane, which is on the surface of cells or within the endoplasmic reticulum and in vesicles in the endomembrane system. Why are we looking for this? Well, it's showing that the protein will eventually reach the outer surface, which can be seen by immune cells. So we can look up here. You can notice all the pretty pictures, the colors. There's a little problem with the MNT7A. You can notice that there's no picture available. I'll get back to that and I'll explain why. Let me go to the next one. And here's some recap of each one. So as you can see for the ADAM9, EFNB2, and MET, the proteins for all of the above are localized to the endoplasmic reticulum and vesicles, but MET shows substantial localization to the plasma membrane. So let's keep an eye on MET right there. For TMOD3, you can notice that it's cytosolic, and for TPX2, the protein is localized to the nucleus. It kind of looks nuclear, so that's why we're going to little kick that out for being a top antigen choice right there. Now we're going to jump to the gene expression graphs. Um, as you can see right here, the graph is what you're, you're going to be seeing in a few seconds. I go to the next slide. But the goal is to look for low expression in TPM in normal adult tissues. Why? So that the immune system of a vaccinated person does not attack normal healthy tissues. And I'm going to go and explain. This is not your typical looking bar graph or anything you've seen before, so I'm going to explain in the next slide. OK. so. On the y-axis, it says TPM right here. TPM stands for transcripts per million. And on the x-axis, it's gene expression plots from the normal adult tissues. 
You can see the names pretty well here. You can see some brain, muscle, brain, skin, all the above. You can see just all right here. They're all listed for each graph. Now here are the graphs for each one. Um, it's not a coincidence that they're all going from lowest to highest. I actually ordered them that way. But as you can see, um, certain graphs look more filled than the other. Um, some of them look like there's any, barely anything to be seen. So we can take this in for a little moment. Um, I want to say real quickly that the range, the TPM range, which is the y-axis for all graphs, are all different. The ranges are extremely different, and I'm going to, I made a little graph, um, a bar graph of showing each one in a few seconds. I will show that to you as well. See right here? Okay, here's a little recap summary of basically what I've been looking for. For the subcellular localization, I concluded that the MET cell was the best choice because it was the gene locate, containing the most protein located on the outer surface of the plasma membrane. And for the gene express analysis, it's a little graph I made of all the average medians for the top 10 transcripts for million values. Right here you can see uh, what we're looking for is the lowest one. So clearly the atom 9 would not be the best one to use. So we were going to go with the WNT7A right there with the lowest um, average. So you like that one right there. Sorry for the words, but I have to get through right here. Um, here's a little recap. So basically, um, this whole research process was me being inspired by Huang's research and carrying on with that about finding top six antigens and basically narrowing them down to the top few. Um, for subcellular localization, we concluded that the MET was the highly promising one because it's clearly localized to the plasma membrane, whereas the other ones were not as well. And let me give you a quick explanation on the why the WNT7A image was missing. It's because um, the protein was reported to be secreted, um, which means released outside of the tumor cells where it promotes metastasis. So that's why we don't have really that much information on it. Um, let me go to the next slide. Um, for the gene expression, the WNT7A showed the lowest number of TPMs out of all six genes on its gene expression profile of all normal adult tissues. And as I explained before, the lesser chance of side effects taking place would show with low expression on vaccinated PAAD individuals. And during low expression, it also programs the immune system to attack a tumor that is overexpressing the protein. Um, now, if we're going, you notice that I had two top categories for each um, a little a circumstance I'm looking for. I had WNT7A and MET, which I wasn't trying to go for. I was trying to have one super top one, so we're going to discuss um, which one would be the better one to use out of the two. Um, the comparatively, if higher expression rate of MET in normal adult tissues suggests a higher possibility of side effects in a MET-based mRNA vaccine. So what that means, I'm going to go back a few slides to show you guys the graph again. If you look at the MET, um, you can notice that the graph compared to WCNA, there's way more going on. And if we go to the graph again on the next one where I um, put them all together, comparing the WNT7A and the MET, you can clearly see the average difference. This one's three right here on three. I can't really see the number. And then over here is 14. So we want like the overall lower one. And obviously WNT7A would be the better choice for that to have less of a chance of side effects happening with the vaccinated individual. I mean, so yeah, we're gonna go with, in conclusion, using the criteria of localization to the outer cell surface and lowest expression in normal and adult tissues, WNT7A shows the most promise as a mRNA vaccine antigen to treat PAAD, pancreatic adenocarcinoma. And so what are we gonna do next with this information? So what I am implying on doing is to create a WNC7A-based mRNA vaccine and begin testing for immune response, which is antibody production, in mice and monkeys while evaluating side effects of the vaccination. And I just want to give a special thank you to the Fundamentals of Scientific Research 1 honors of SCIR 297HC course, the Biological Science Pathway of Montgomery College's Early College Program, and of course, Dr. Linda Gerardo for helping me throughout this scientific research process. 
And here are the references if you'd like to see that as well. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you.